Welcome. Hi. How are you? Doing well. How about you? Excellent. Yes, I'm doing really well. Just a lot going on at the moment. I'm just, I saw your email earlier, but I haven't had a chance to reply to it yet. But I'll be, yeah, we'll, we'll link up. It's lovely okay. to see you. Nice to see you too. Or where are you? Where, I'm in Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah. But not the, a great deal of good because everything, the beach is closed, the pools are closed, everything's closed. So it's just... Mm. Yeah, California has shut down everything a couple of weeks ago, but Florida... Florida's recently, right, is doing... Uh, they kind of, I think about last, sometime in the last few days, they've said no one can go to work. Mm. So they're shutting all offices and everything like that. So I think they are locking down. All the um, restaurants have been closed for some time. And um, no, yeah, yeah, I think they are kind of policing things. But mm. It's like that the world over. So welcome, everybody. We are a little on the early side. The reason we started 10 minutes late tonight is that in the UK, they were clapping for the health services, for national health, and everyone's outside their houses with um, pots and pans and playing medical, in, uh, playing uh, instruments, musical instruments, <laughs> and just cheering and clapping. So it was actually quite uplifting to watch mm -hmm. that. And uh, um, saw the prime minister clapping. He looked, like, he looked like a performing monkey. Did you see him, Julie? I was outside. I feel quite emotional about it. My brother is going running one of the hospitals that's looking after COVID nineteen. So. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of I people. Feel that... These people are putting their lives on the line every day. Yeah, yeah. No, is is uh, definitely mm -hmm. challenging for everybody. And that was come into the room. Can you mute yourself, please, or Julie? Can you mute them? Is that... And also, if you can turn your cameras on as well, that would be great. We're going to get started in about... Oh, so are you, um, you're just at home as well, Joanna? Just... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I work from home, so it, in some ways it hasn't felt that disruptive, especially with the, the workshop that I gave last week, so I was full on into you know, work, workaholic mode. <laughs> oh, sorry, I couldn't get to that. It was just completely crazy. We suddenly thought we had funding for April and it fell over because of this virus. And so we've just been putting out fires and it's just every single day. I said yeah. to Ben, my husband this morning, I can't believe it's going to be Friday again tomorrow when we got <laughs> panting to the end of Friday last week, thinking, oh my God, this has been a, like a roller coaster this week. And here we've had another one. I but know. It's, yeah. it's I, I did venture out to go grocery shopping yesterday, which was quite the experience. Yes, I think uh, I managed to get a shopping cart through this morning. Was, I've been trying for a whole week to get this cart and uh, it didn't come until this morning. I got a, I managed to get a slot. Um, mm -hmm. Julia, are we doing the um, so everyone's on the screen? Yeah, I'm they, just doing it. I think they're oh, coming. OK. I think we're still a little on the early side. Well, so. It's only nine minutes past. And we said ten past. Yeah. We know people. Yeah. We know people come in in the lot in the first few minutes. So. Yes, that was brilliant. So as you come in, if you can um, put your cameras on, please, and mute yourselves. That would be wonderful. We'll get a chance to say hello to everybody a bit later on, hopefully. Um, as many of you know, we were just starting a bit late because of the uh, clapping for the. National Health Service in England and uh, they're just about finished I think now so we're gonna get started so as you are um, here let's go and start to do a little bit of breathing I think to get going so if you haven't got your camera on just pop it on if you can um, make sure your microphone's off and then what I'd like to do is just a couple of minutes of some lovely, deep and calming breathing. So if you just close your eyes and what we're going to do is I think we'll breathe in for a count of four, hold it for seven and then exhale for eight. So if you haven't done that before, it might take a bit of concentration. So let's go. So breathe in and count to four. One, two, three four hold it for seven two three four 
five, six, seven, and then gradually let it out for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then again, in for four, two, three, four, hold it for seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and let it go for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then once more, in for four, two, three, four, hold it for seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then out for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now while you've still got your eyes closed, what I want you to do is focus on any things that you can think of immediately that you've got to be grateful for. So that could be people, places, home comforts, good food, friends, the internet <laughs> that connects us, or anything you like, but just focus on those and fill yourself up with some lovely things that make you feel good. Okay, just if you can't actually see the vision of it, just kind of get the sense of it. Keep breathing, and then you can roll your shoulders. Put your feet on the floor if you can reach. Just feel the ground under your feet so you feel a bit grounded. And then gradually come back so you're in the room with us. <sighs> okay, so what we wanted to do today was focus on nurturing ourselves. And there's quite a different, a variety of ways that we can nourish ourselves. So obviously the first thing that comes to mind is with food. And someone I was talking to earlier on today was asking how to cope with wanting to eat too much food. So we have to get the balance right. Um, but there are other ways as well that we can nurture ourselves and nourish ourselves. So we can um, do the things that make us smile and think about the things that make us smile so that we are helping to keep our endorphins flowing through our body, those lovely feel good hormones. And we can also be kind to ourselves, be kind in our mind, as well as being kind to our body. So I just wanted to take them one at a time, and then we can maybe go around the room and we can all swap ideas about what we're doing. So firstly, looking at food, sometimes it's um, not so easy. I don't think in our lifetime we really contemplated that it might be hard to get food. And I don't know about you, but we are ordering our food online and it's taken me nearly a week to get um, a basket at Whole Foods that would be able to be delivered every day. I went on there and it said no deliveries available, which is a little bit scary. So, but we've been managing. And um, so that's interesting. And then sometimes you haven't got all the ingredients for the things that you'd ideally like to cook. And so you maybe have to improvise to make different things. Last night I decided that we were gonna have soup because we're not using up so much energy. So we cooked up a soup with all the vegetables that we had left in the fridge, just to make sure that we were using them while they're still fresh. And um, I put in some really nice herbs I had and some turmeric and uh, onions and garlic. And by the time we finished, we had this really delicious soup, which we served with rice. It was nice and light. And then I sprinkled a bit of Parmesan cheese on top of mine and um, it was quite delicious. So I haven't really done anything like that before. So you may want to try different things because if you're sitting around all day, you may not want to have really heavy meals. And then I was talking to someone earlier today, a patient who was saying that she just can't stop eating she's just all the time because she's at home, she's thinking about food. And so we were talking, uh, especially as Easter's coming and there's probably more chocolate in the house than usual. Um, that was a problem for her as well. So we were talking about how you can eat little and often, and also maybe in her case, needing to boost things like chromium levels because we have nutritional deficiencies. And if you get food cravings, then things like magnesium and chromium and B vitamins are often in short supply and you need to tank up on those. So it's up to each of you to um, assess your nutrient levels. We've got a lovely download that we can share with you so that you can go through that and check to see whether you've got low levels of any important nutrients and which foods are rich in those so you can focus on those. And then if you feel you need some supplements as well, then you can 
tank up perhaps with some extra chromium, magnesium and B vitamins. There's um, something called chromium complex that we use in the UK. I'm not sure there's quite the equivalent in the US, but you can get the single nutrients. And over time, because we're only born with a 16th of an ounce of chromium and it gets less as we get older, and magnesium was probably the most common deficiency in all the research we've done. And B vitamins often in short supply if you're stressed or if you've been a data or not eating too much, or maybe if you've been washing your food down with too much alcohol over time, you can get low levels of B vitamins as well. So when we get to midlife, usually we're running on empty when it comes to those nutrients. And so it can make us want to eat food and um, not be able to stop so easily. So making sure that you've got in this new normal routine that you're still eating regular meals, that you're not skipping a meal because if you're likely to do that, then you may be craving the, uh, the cookies and the junk um, and making sure that you've got a good serving, but not too much. So that you end up piling on the pounds because our metabolism slows down at midlife so that we do tend to get that muffin around our middle if we're not exercising. And it's much harder to keep your shape as you get older. So if you're eating the same number of calories that you were eating before, but you're far less active, then you're not going to be using those calories up. So make sure again that you do your exercise. I'm tending to do mine first thing in the morning. If I can't do it first thing in the morning, I try and do it in the afternoon before I get too tired and maybe break it into different little segments so that you're doing some exercise to get going with going out for walks when you can and then get yourself something else that you like to do. In my case, it's a hula hoop and my, now my new skipping rope. Um, but you can do whatever you fancy doing and um, do that in the comfort of your own home. So there's tons of amazing uh, videos on YouTube. You can go and choose the thing you like, whether it's yoga, Pilates or something jumping around. If you've got Wii Fit and you've got kids at home, you can do something like that. There are just lots of different things and you may have other ideas that you can swap with each other. So I think keep moving, make sure you don't just keep moving at one point in the day because that's not very healthy for us. Um, in fact, that can cause all sorts, of, all sorts of other health issues in the long term. So it's really, really important to be active. So those are um, things that I would suggest so keeping yourself well nourished. Maybe if you like cooking, you can look at doing some things that you haven't done before or you haven't done for a long time, maybe use some of the extra time. If you hate cooking, then you're gonna to have to look for some fast options, maybe throw a salad together and just have some protein with that, plenty of nuts and seeds, and you can just throw those into your salads as well and just make them yummy without having to do too much work. So obviously if the restaurants are closing down, sometimes you can get takeout, but not always. So you may need to be resourceful. And if you are cooking, one of the things that I tend to do is cook in batches. So if, for example, I'm making spaghetti, spaghetti bolognese sauce, then I tend to cook enough for an army and then freeze it so that we've got some that we don't have to then, if you're busy, you don't have to then perhaps cook the whole meal. You can just take it out in the morning or the night before and defrost it and do the rest that goes with it. So think, think about maybe doing that as well if you've got enough room in your freezer. And then being kind to your body, at this time, you've got to make sure that you're fortified and that your immunity is protected. And there are lots of things that you can do to make sure that's the case. So first of all, doing the things I've talked about, having wholesome food and a constant supply of good nutrients will help you to protect yourself. Exercising also does that, helps to pr protect your immunity and boost your immunity. Um, if there are herbs as well that you can take and some vitamins and minerals and you can pick and choose zinc is particularly good for boosting immunity and there are other herbs as well we put together a little kit in our shop um, for immunity boosting with vitamin c and um, you can either pick that or you can just pick individual nutrients to help yourself but it's a good time just like in the winter, you do something like that to protect yourself against flu. I think it's none of us can afford to be complacent at the moment. So you might, if you're already taking some supplements, you might adjust those a little bit. And then also being kind to your body is doing things that make you smile. So if it's having a bath with some music on, listening 
to the music you like with some candles, aromatherapy oil, or whatever it is, um, pampering yourself with nice body lotion, putting some nice oils on your face maybe, um, massaging your face, giving yourself an Indian head massage, or asking your partner to. There's just so many different things that you can do, but you need to kind of think about what really makes you smile, what do you like, and how you can incorporate that into your day. And then also being kind to your mind as well, because everyone I'm talking to is feeling stressed and anxious, doesn't matter how old they are, there's this big unknown about what's going to happen. When is the world going to return to normal? Is it ever going to be normal? And what does my future look like? How about my kids? And so on and so on. There's just so many unknown questions. And so what I was saying to someone earlier today was it's, there is only now, it's just so important to be in the moment and to be grateful for what you've got in the here and now. There's no point worrying about what may happen tomorrow because none of us actually know, but we can enjoy today and we can make the day good for not just ourselves, but we can make it good for other people as well. So that we're constantly in touch with our friends and our family. We're having little social events online. Thank heavens we can do this. And we are making sure that we still those negative voices when they come into our minds. And if you need tools, there's plenty of tools that you can use. We were talking the other day about mindfulness. And in fact, we've got um, somebody who's going to be coming to talk about mindfulness and also um, focusing on positive things. And I know Barry, who's joined us today, is going to come and talk to us about being positive as well um, a bit further down the line. There are just so many things that we can do at, to help ourselves be in the moment, whether it's affirmations, whether it's listening to nice music, whether it's doing something like Headspace or the Pazir's app, meditation, whether you get into moving meditation when you do your exercise, whether it's hugging your, one of your family, stroking your dog, whatever it happens to be that works for you, but you need to pepper your life with those lovely moments for yourself, both physically and mentally at the moment. And that will help you to feel good. And if someone in your family isn't feeling so good, maybe give them a massage and sit down, make time for them and just have an exchange. Think about some things that happened to you in the past that made you laugh or even go onto YouTube and watch some old clips that made you laugh. And there's some fabulous TED Talks. There's just so many TED Talks. The breathing ones are probably a great place to start because there are so many good ones that deal with anxiety. So you can go and have a look at some of those. Um, we're making a directory of all the really good things to do for yourself and all the good links. So if any of you have got links to amazing things that you'd like to share with other people, if you let us know, we'll pop that on the directory and then that will be available to everybody. And you can, uh, we can just add to that. So it's a kind of living, uh, living document. So just making sure that you mindfully take care of yourself Keep your space nice and tidy. We were talking about decluttering the other day. Just making sure that you are doing all the things you can for yourself and taking time to smile because even smiling and laughing will help to release endorphins in your body. And that helps to counteract the rising levels of cortisol, which are the stress hormone. So we've got, and if you're waking up early in the morning feeling stressed, then you need to plug into an app while you're still in bed, maybe take some ashwagandha or one of the lovely adaptogenic herbs and just let yourself lay there thinking about some really good things in your life, things you have to be grateful for, things that you can control because there are some things in life we can definitely control and there are some that we all know now we just have no control over and we just have to live with that and spend maybe a little bit of time consciously adjusting your mind to the fact that you can't control this. It is new normal. And we do need to get into a rhythm of new normal and being grateful for what that looks like. So in my case, I was running from America to London and back again every few weeks and absolutely itching to spend more time sitting still and having time with my husband 
obviously I didn't want it to happen quite this way, but that's a benefit for me. It's a bonus that I've actually got more quality time with him. So there will be things that you can think of probably in your life that's happening as a result of this that isn't negative, that's positive. And it would be lovely to just open this up and share maybe what some of those positives are. And that may be how we can kind of get our discussion going today so that people can exchange and give each other a bit of inspiration about what's working for you. So, um, Julie, I can still only see um, the little gallery at the top. I can't see everyone on the screen. I don't know. Um, but if who would like to kick off some positive things? Maybe we should we maybe kick off with you Barry because you're the queen of positivity if you take your um just unmute yourself Marion if you go to the top right hand corner and switch on the thing that says speak of you and gallery view you should be able to get everybody okay brilliant okay fantastic yeah I don't know what happened here but um, okay I walked away for a second because what I was going to do is hold up something that I had created oh good a lot of years ago and the other day when I was cleaning up my room because I've been doing a lot of my meetings on Zoom calls, I fixed up the board because it was kind of sagging and there were a few things missing. But to just create some pictures or some quotes or whatever it is that make you smile and that's one way that I stay in a positive space is I just can stare at this board and you know it's just like a fun thing and you know, this is a precious time where we have time on our hands that for me personally, I always say, oh, I wish time would just stop and I could catch up and do this and do this and do this. And now we have that time. And so for me, it's about being intentional during this time and really using the time for things that I want to do as opposed to sitting in front of a TV and just letting the hours drift by and not, you know, using it productively. Yeah. Absolutely. Whatever it is for you, whatever yeah. it is for anybody, it's just be intentional with your time. Yeah, we were talking about that the other day, actually, of, of making a schedule for yourself rather than just getting up in your pajamas and um, wandering through the day. <laughs> but you should really be doing more a structure to your day. And I think lots of people took that on board. So I, that is um, definitely the way to travel, especially if you're working as well. I think you have to do something like that. But yes, yeah, and we come back to the, the vision board that you showed just now. We're going to do a, um, a whole session on that. And I don't know if that's next week or the week after, but anyway, we are coming to that. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, so who would like to um, contribute next? Who's got something positive they've been doing? Can I talk, Marion? Yes, go ahead. Great. It's not, it's not really happy. I just I need to get this off my chest. Uh, last night I woke up perhaps uh, probably two o'clock-ish with a very bad headache right in my forehead and my whole, f my sinuses were really odd, really weird. I really can't explain it and it lasted for probably about a good half hour. I, I sat up a little bit in bed <clears throat> but it was scary considering what's going on right now. And eventually I got back to sleep and I was okay today, but it was frightening. So yeah, no, I'm sure that must have been really frightening, especially as you're on your own as well, aren't you, Ellen? Yeah, yeah. I think that um, maybe you were having a dream and you picked up on something or some energy, I don't know, but the fact that you're okay today is good news. And yeah. um, I think maybe to, do you have a, a coping technique if you get into that situation, do you get, do you kind of get I, up? I, I'm very calm when it comes to stuff like that. Um, I just thought, well, if it's the virus, it's the virus. That was my big worry. Right. Because right down here, down my nose, down the side of my, my face, it wasn't painful. It was just a really weird feeling. And the headache right here at the front. And it's never, ever happened before. But you didn't wake up with it this morning? Oh, no. This was during the night. That's so weird. Well, let's hope it was fleeting and that you're going to be healthy going forward. So I'm pleased yeah. that you're feeling better today. So, so anyone, yeah, 
So um, who's got some something positive and inspirational to share about what they're doing? How about you, Joanna? I know that you um, you did your lovely sessions didn't you, that I missed for people talking about their story. Do you want to just tell us about, a bit about what you've been doing? Because you're, you're making the most of the time, aren't you? Yeah, um, I, yeah, I'm staying busy. Yeah, last week um, I, I held a workshop four days in a row, 30 minute sessions on share your story, really to help women share their, you know, well, just share their memories and their insights and their stories with loved ones through a legacy journal. So helping them figure out how to feel motivated and inspired to, to write that. I've got a program that's starting in May. So it was just a little workshop to give people a taste of what it is that they could do. But I feel like this is such a great time to build a bridge to future generations by taking a look at our lives and seeing where we've been and what we've the wisdom we've gained from it and start putting that in a way that can live on beyond us. So it was really, there was a lot of great feedback from it and it felt so good to give because it was just a workshop that was open to whoever wanted to come. And so that felt fulfilling for me. Yeah, no, I think that is, I think that's, I think, yeah, one of the things I'm really loving about this little community is that everyone's coming together and feeling some benefit from connecting just even that simple act of having a time to come online and just connect with other people and exchange. And um, the little tips that we had last week from people, I'm sure some of you have been trying them out and um, it'll be interesting to know anybody has, has tried anything out that's really worked for them that they heard on here. That would um, be interesting as well. So who else has got anything they'd like to share? Julie, you were talking earlier. Who, um, Karen's got something she wants to say, and then Lisa. Okay. Go ahead, Karen. Evening. Hi. Uh, hi. Um, I have taken this opportunity to bring forward my retirement plan. <laughs> so what, what I'm doing is renovating an old garden. Uh, it's got greenhouses and ponds. So I have started clearing away all the dead growth from years of neglect. Um, and of course, it's the wrong time of year for the garden centres to provide food. But yeah. I have got all the seeds. So what I've been doing is clearing out all the greenhouse and digging out all the old tomato plants. And I'm putting in new pots of soil and planting flowers and veg. Uh, so it, it, it's brought forward my plants by a few years. But, you know, it's keeping me going. Um, I, gets me a bit sunshine. So it's great. I think it's so good on so many levels because it's giving you exercise. It's giving you something really creative to do. And also at the end of the day, you're going to have beautiful flowers and food. Yes. So exactly. that's, yeah, that's really good. And I also, I also created a shed. I've, I've cleared a shed that I'm going to knock down, which would have been coming down had there not been a lockdown. Um, but I have created a wooden shed in, because I'm a big country Western fan. I've now got a wagon wheel on the side of my shed. It's all made of wood. And it, I'm really quite proud of it. Yeah, oh, really we'll have to take a photo of it and share it with us. Oh, I've got photos, but <laughs> I don't know about that. So, it, but it's fun. It's been fun to do. It's practical. And it also means that it, it's forwarded on my plans a lot. Um, but from, if that's not enough, heavy weightlifting and being out in the fresh air five, six hours a day, you know? And, and then I come in and I do line dancing. So, oh, wow. <laughs> I, line dance. I have a very big open plan kitchen here, kitchen diner. And all I have to do is move the table a bit and I can line dance around the furniture. So oh, that's amazing. It's great because a lot of the musicians in the clubs have all had their gigs cancelled. So what they're doing is they've got a UK country music line dance page on Facebook and people can now even more a bigger audience can actually tap into their live shows and these musicians are doing it from their living rooms I know I've seen some of them they're amazing they're it, really amazing and the music's really good and it's tapping and they're you know they're most of them are friends of mine as well so it's good to support them and it's really nice to see their lovely houses you know I know <laughs> really nice houses <laughs> it's just it's really which good is, which is the channel on facebook what's the name of the facebook group 
It's UK country online, country music okay. online. Okay. Uh, just do a, a search for it on Facebook. Yeah. And they're having a show like Tuesday and Sunday nights. Um, and diff different musicians are doing different shows on different nights. Uh, so they all have their allocated slots. And all you have to do is tune in. Yeah, I think it's amazing. I, I was saying the other day that I, I just happened to stumble upon um, Chris Martin and uh, in his front room. And um, it, it was, yeah, it was just amazing. And I've seen a few more since then. And I think that my cousin actually looks after the band Foreigner. And okay, okay. They obviously are not doing their tours at the moment. And I was thinking this morning as I was cleaning my teeth that maybe they'll be doing virtual concerts because everyone, everything's cancelled, isn't it? For the summer, all the concerts are cancelled as well. It is. And of course, right in the background, they've usually got their banner with PayPal, you know, <laughs> written on it. <laughs> Please <laughs> donate. <laughs> so, the other thing that you can do if you like classical music is um, there's the Met Opera. And I think there's lots of others. We're trying to put some of these things on our resource list. You can actually go and subscribe to those and you can go and take your drinks and hunker down and go and watch them yeah. as if you were in the theatre. So it's, right. I think there's, there are, but that's, I think that's where the structure comes in. You need to plan out. And I was talking to somebody yesterday in um, a group like this and she was saying that she's had so many invitations to so many parties and so many things that she is completely overwhelmed with things oh. she, she was going to have a quiet time at home and instead it's ended up she's now having to pick and choose about what she goes to because there's so many things to do so I think that's that's really lovely and you spend all your time in front of the computer <laughs> well except when you're lying down around your kitchen so that you know in, in my case I'm kind of jumping around on my balcony I think you've just got to do whatever you can do haven't you yeah, yeah. and I'm very yeah. fortunate that I live in the countryside so and the light and the space and and I love the fact that the animals are taking over again yeah so it's great to see excellent well, thank you very much for sharing that with us it's really uplifting and inspiring I'll shut up now <laughs> Lisa, you want to share something? Hi, everyone. Um, mine is not really inspirational, but something I <clears throat> did for myself the other day. I have naturally curly hair. I just got out of the shower, and I usually go get a real deep conditioning treatment. <clears throat> so I Googled, if you take, for longer hair, a half a cup of warm olive oil, shorter hair, a fourth a cup, and just lather it in there and leave it on for 45 minutes, put it uh, a shower cap on and then go in the shower and rinse it. And I thought, oh my God, it's never gonna come out. I'm gonna be greasy forever. And uh, it, I did two um, shampoos and be careful because the uh, shower floor got a little bit slippery, but well, not too bad. And I have to tell you, I don't think I'm ever gonna pay for a conditioning treatment again. It was awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I'm sure there's loads of home, um, home things that you can do. To, uh, for your hair as well. I think there are all sorts of recipes, but olive oil is a really good one. I used to use that. Yeah, Karen. Can I, you... can I just say, um, you, I was being neat and tidy. See this? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is what happens to curly hair when you use a hot brush. Yeah? But what I've been doing for naturally curly hair is that there's a curly girl method. You don't use shampoo. You condition it twice and just wash it and it's the rubbing with your fingers that actually stimulates the natural oils in your head. And when you come out, just get some kind of like coconut oil. Uh, I use something called an ecto. And you just scrunch your hair like that, put it up in a, like an old t-shirt. Or you get these, you know, you get these little bonnets that you can buy, like just a soft cloth. Um, most people use t-shirts. Wrap your hair up in it, five minutes, take it off, you go like that, beautiful curls. Wow. Really lovely curls. And, and I've been doing it for five months. And unfortunately, I did try and use the hot brush again, and it was just a disaster. So normally, I would have lovely curls like this, Lisa. You know, that just go like that. So that's what you do. Don't use shampoo. It's called the curly girl method. Okay. Wow. Okay, I'll shut up again. It's okay, I'll shut up. I have to be brave enough to let my hair go curly. I tend to let it not. <laughs> but anyway, some people have nicer curls than others. Who else has got anything they've been doing that's working for them? 
Anything you'd like to share? Hello. Hi. Uh, sorry, ladies, I'm late to the party. Uh, Don't worry. I'm, I'm, quite 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 I'm not quite sure where you were in the discussions, but I have a question. Go ahead. Um, how, what is your take of, uh, on MACA for um, menopausal symptoms? I uh, just well, started using it, but it's, it's too soon to say if it's doing, having any effect. Okay. Well, um, we tend to use, um, there's lots of different MACAs on the market, and some of them are not standardized, and some of them haven't been through clinical trials. So the one we tend to use is Feminescence Macapause. And um, that is standardized. So we don't use it in isolation. We use it in conjunction with all sorts of other recommendations to sort out menopause symptoms. And if you talk to Julie afterwards, she'll point you in the direction of one of our webinars that you can listen to where I talk about how you manage your menopause symptoms. So you can get a bit more information and we can give you lots of information. So um, I don't think with menopause that you can just expect to take one thing and it's gonna solve all your problems because it's so multifactorial, but um, using- Well, to be honest, I'm just having two issues right now, luckily enough. Um, the others have subsided. And so I just wanted um, that, you know, I, I just wanted to use MACA to see if that would get me through the, the, the last two. Symptoms. Right. Well, you can certainly try. Um, the, as I said, not all macro is equal, so it depends what you're taking as to whether it's likely to be effective. But um, I'd use up what you've got and then see where you go. If it helps, it's fine. If you need more help, then you can get some. Okay, thanks. That's okay. Any, you... uh, any suggestions for thinning hair? Uh, yep, there are lots of suggestions for thinning hair. Um, there, first of all, somebody who's got thinning hair, I'd suggest that they uh, get their iron stores measured and their thyroid function because they're two reasons if you've got low iron and your thyroid's not working very well then your hair can thin so that's um, those things would need to be addressed first of all if that was the case and then um, apart from that there are a whole raft of supplements that you can try that have been through clinical trials to show that they help with hair growth um, and there are some lotions and potions as well um, we have got information about that separately. So um, yeah, we can, again, Judy can probably point you in the right direction for that. Okay, thank you. That's okay. Anyone got anything inspirational that they'd like to share? I know, Julie, you were telling me a story earlier on. <laughs> no one else has. You can tell your little story or your career. Maybe you don't want to. <laughs> I was really trying to avoid this one. <laughs> I always give Marion a story just in case nobody wants to talk. So this was today's. I, um, it's all about looking after yourself and looking after your body. So my thing to do on a Sunday, having had a long, lovely bath and all my sort of nice oils and whatever, is to get out my really nice body lotion and rub it into your body but start from your toes and sort of work up but you say thank you to every part of your body because we, we don't think about how hard our body works for us so you say thank you toes and thank you feet and thank you ankle and it sounds really stupid but believe me if you do it after about the second or third time and obviously nobody else is around because I live on my own it actually is a really nice thing to do and it makes me feel really nice that's one of the things I do to make myself feel nice. Yeah, I think that's actually, you're right. We don't really think about, we just expect our body to serve us, don't we? And it doesn't always um, do that in the way we'd like it to. But when it is doing it, we forget to say thank you. Yes, because it so, does, it's very hard for us every day. It certainly does. And especially now, we've got all these additional stresses and strains as well. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm glad to be here with you lovely ladies. I am, going, I am going through menopause, but what I do is I sit in my room that I have now. I have a nice little room that I will have a cup of tea. I love the holy basil tea, and I will either listen to um, apps um, that calm me. Like I love adult bedtime stories. I don't always listen to them at night, but you can watch. You can listen to them sometimes in the daytime also. And I do my deep breathing. Um, sorry, I do my deep breathing. I light my candle. 
and I look out my window. I do sit on a lot of land. So, and I'm originally from New York City, so I moved to South Carolina. Um, and I've just learned to really appreciate the trees. And I look up at the trees and I just listen to inspirational things and that helps me. So, you know, that's yeah, I one think, of the things that yeah, I do. I think, it, I think it helps to keep you in the moment. And yeah. it's great that those things work for you. Again, if you need some help, extra help with your menopause, if you just talk to Julie, we've got so many tools for menopause. Yeah, and I, do. I do. Yeah. yeah. We've got all sorts of things that we can help you with. But that's lovely to hear. And I think that um, one of the gifts that this ghastly time has given us is we have got time, as Barry said, our lives are on pause. And we have got more time to drop and smell the roses, as it were, and whatever that work, you know, however that looks for us. But things maybe that we put on the back burner that we were thinking... We didn't have time to do it at this stage in our life. Maybe we have got time to do that now. I and just want to ask one question. Why is it that most of the support is in the UK? Like even the US here, there's most of the support that I've gotten is from the UK. And is it, can you like, do you notice that? Or have you realized that? And I'm just wondering why is it so much open more in the UK about menopause than it is in the US? Because I don't really, it has some supports, but I don't find as much support that I've gotten than the, I've got it from the UK. And yeah. I appreciate that. I really. I think in the UK. Yeah, we, I mean, we've been helping people for over 28 years with a non drug approach. And We've been, had a really high profile in the media for a lot of those years. We've done lots of research and lots of surveys. And so we, in England, we've got national media. So you can get things on TV and in the national papers, which everyone reads. Whereas in America, everything pretty much, with the exception of a few things, are regional. And so it's harder to get the word out here, probably, than it is in England. Because if you're on television there, then the chances are anybody who's watching in the whole country can see you. So, um, and then I think because of that, we've raised the profile. We did lots of articles. Um, I did lots of articles in the Daily Mail about 18 months, a year ago, even as long as six months ago, like really big, some of them were three page articles, big surveys, and it did actually take the lid off the subject. And there's now quite a few people in the space in the UK. I think our natural program is still fairly unique and um, it gets over 90% of women through within five months being completely symptom free. And we've got a six week program as well. So it's actually really exciting because it leaves you feeling not just better from your menopause symptoms, but it also teaches you how to prevent things like osteoporosis, heart disease and dementia in the long term. So that midlife just becomes that. And it's the beginning of the next part of your life, which is as enjoyable, if not more so than the life that's been before. So often we go downhill so slowly, we don't notice. And I talked a bit about nutritional deficiencies before, but there's massive studies done now, not just our small five studies. There are studies done to show that billions of women around the world have got nutritional deficiencies. And that affects everything. It affects your brain chemistry, your hormone function, your energy, and everything that you can possibly imagine. So it, and no one teaches us about how to get our nutrients back into an optimum range. And so I think it is important at midlife to learn how to get your refuel. And that's essentially what it is. Learn how to get naturally occurring estrogen so that you can manage your symptoms and also protect yourself, future-proof your health in the long term. So I have actually, um, in fact, just before this, I was on the phone to my new publisher, this American publisher, talking about my first American book that's coming out at the end of October and talking about the publicity that we'll be doing here. So we are launching our American program um, here, and we are planning to raise the bar here as well. But if you need some help in the meantime, you're, you're very welcome. Anybody else to share anything inspirational? Well, what are we doing tomorrow, Julia? I can't remember what the subject is tomorrow. Do you I can't remember now? <laughs> Okay, let me look in my book. I wrote it down, I, I wrote it down when we were talking earlier. Uh, no, stress busters. 
Stress busters. Okay, so yeah, tomorrow we're talking about busting stress. So that um, lots of self-help things for that. And um, next week, I think we've got someone coming to do guided meditation with us. We've got all sorts of interesting things coming up. And so think next week, we're doing guided meditation, which we thought everybody might quite enjoy doing a very short guided meditation and then having a chat. Um, we're doing cravings. So how to beat your cravings, because I think we're all going to have that coming up with Easter. And then we were going to do a whole thing next week on um, surviving the holidays, because it's going to be very different for us. I think a lot of people normally see their families and doing different things next weekend. Um, that won't be happening, um, having Easter dinner and whatever else. So we thought that would be quite useful. Um, if you have any ideas about what you might like to do, please drop me a note. We'll drop it into the schedule, because we, we're sort of planning a couple of weeks ahead. And we're looking to get some keynotes, some speakers to come along as well. But please let us know if there's anything in particular you'd like to talk about or us to find out, you know, come and talk to you about. Please just drop yeah. me an email. It's Juliet Marionstuart.com. We've got we've already got, I think, three or four speakers um, who've agreed to come and join us, which is nice. Barry's one of them. Um, I've got an old friend of mine called Vivian who's coming to do the guided meditation. Um, and we've got someone coming to talk about mindset who's a psychologist and somebody else coming to talk about mindfulness but if there's anything else other than those subjects that you'd like us to cover or if you happen to know a really good expert who might join us and share their wisdom then and certainly if you've got friends who'd like to come and join our sessions then you can pass the link around and invite them as well and ladies so, we've set up um, a whatsapp group to help us communicate in between these sessions so if you go to the website preferably on your phone if you go to marionstuart.com, on the front page, there's a button and you can join um, our WhatsApp group, which we'll be talking on, because I know Morning, who spoke to us, the nice American lady who was talking, has, was the first person to join our WhatsApp group. So then we've just launched that um, today. So um, please come along and join us. And Marion and all of the team will be in there helping everyone. Brilliant. So thank you for joining us. So look forward to seeing you. Tomorrow is actually back at tea time. So that's four o'clock UK time and uh, 11 a.m. EST. And um, for those of you who are in other time zones, hopefully you'll be up and- Work it out. <laughs> join us as well. I, I keep, I've just realized I'm giving a talk on the 5th of May to, I think it's 85 or 90 HR executives. And I was, it was meant to be at Visa in Paddington in London and it's at 9.30 in the morning. I think it starts about nine o'clock in the morning and I'm on at 9.30. And then I suddenly realized I'm five hours behind. So I'm actually going to have to be up, made up, dressed and ready for four o'clock <laughs> in the morning, which didn't exactly thrill me, but I don't have any choice. <laughs> so we won't be asking you to get up that early. Hopefully we'll do these sessions at convenient times, but um, hope you're enjoying them as well. We'd love to have some of your feedback too. And, um, Maybe we'll make a place for that where you can leave some feedback. But do feel free to invite other people as well because we'd like to reach as many people as we can with positivity at this really tricky time. So thank you for joining us. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And if you can't make tomorrow, then see you next Tuesday. And if you don't come tomorrow, then hopefully you have a nice, peaceful and productive weekend. What time is it tomorrow? Tomorrow, 4 is, it's 4 p.m. UK time. That's um, where, who asked that question? Ellen. Ellen, we're back to tea time, Ellen, tomorrow. Oh, I'm tomorrow. Oh, four four yeah. UK time, yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah. Thanks Brilliant. for You'll get a reminder, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Lovely to see you all. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Lovely to see you, Bye. 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 <laughs>